Howdy, howdy. Back in action. Happy Monday to y'all. All you winners in the winner circle. All right. So, today, of course, we've got. Uh, there we go. We've got ourselves another Monday all business stream. Gonna be rocking some Fortnite and some Rocket League as usual. And this evening, we'll be talking about finances a little. I will dive into more of that here in a second and kind of what I actually have planned or for for the actual discussion. Um, put the blazer on. I don't want to put the blazer on. It's hot in here when I do that. Talk about sweaty. Gaming is sweaty enough lately. Even without the blazer. But, uh... Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll be talking about personal finance a little bit, and it's actually a topic name that I came up with a long time ago, probably eight years ago, and it's essentially your name here in parentheses, LLC. So for me, that would mean, of course, Air Newmeyer LLC, and basically, I'll just kind of be talking about how I think it's important to look at your business, or excuse me, at your finances the same way that a business does. Um, and I will dive more into that here in a bit. I need to put a ramp first. I keep putting a wall first and I get stuck under it like that. I just did right there. What's this? Oh, looks like light blue for some reason. Yeah, it's an IO shirt. I wore this last Monday too. Gotta gotta try to keep it business, at least business casual at bare minimum. And I think uh polo and basketball shorts <laughs> uh constitutes business casual these days with all the work from working from home we do. It wasn't always like that, but uh, I rock it nowadays. All right, we're gonna go back here. Did a little pop-up stream Saturday evening. Very, very late Saturday evening. I think it was like midnight my time when I kicked on. Had some issues with Twitch, but I actually got two solo dubs Saturday night. And of course, it did not save the replay of the, either of those games. So, uh, a little bummed about that, but it's at least good to get the monkey off my back of not being able to get a, a, a stub on stream. So I got two under my belt. We'll see if we can make it three or maybe even more tonight. Sure, I'm gonna get some. Sure, you got a. Sure, you got a solo dub. I don't see the replay, which is exactly why I'm pissed that it didn't capture. Uh, what am I doing? Don't do that. Don't even want that. So anyways, uh, your name here, LLC, what the heck do I mean by that? Um, like I, I touched on initially, uh, it, that I think it's a good way, at least a good title and a good topic, because I don't think that really, people people have like a, a, di a differentiation in their heads between 
you know, business finance and personal finance. And I think that a lot of people make the mistake of, you know, allowing that differentiation to be so large. And again, I think the whole kind of concept that I want to kind of portray and put out there is that you should think about your personal finance the same way that a business thinks about business finance. And what I mean by that in, in particular is number one, uh, tracking through like a balance sheet. Obviously, it's just kind of a budget document when people talk about personal finance, but I was fanatical uh, in my younger days about tracking that stuff uh, in very, very close detail. I think a lot of people have a budget document or something that they track, or maybe it's only just something written on a sheet of paper. Um, and the way that I have um, detailed it out, I budget for things like uh, an oil change every six months. I split that apart into monthly increments. So, you know, roughly if you get an oil change twice a year, 85 bucks a pop, at least that's what it is here in Denver, Denver nowadays, um, 85 bucks a pop. I guess maybe we'll just make it a more round number for uh, division's sake. Six months, let's say it's 120 bucks for an oil change. You've got an exotic car. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, that would be, you know, what did I say? 120, six months, 20 bucks a month is what you spend in oil change expense every month. So if you budget for that every six months, um, but track it monthly, when that expense comes up, you're not caught off guard. You're kind of like, all right, cool, I've got the money set aside because I've been accounting for this in the other five months, even though I wasn't paying for it in those five months. You're, you're technically using that oil change use monthly. And budgeting is easy, you know, best done, of course, monthly. So when you track it that way, um, Again, you're just not as caught off guard, and you're not caught by surprise when things like that uh, make their way around in the budget circulation, or the expense circulation, rather. Um, another one that I budget for is a yearly um, car registration. Um... Mine's like 530 bucks a year, so if I wasn't budgeting for that, it would definitely kind of come out of the blue and uh, catch you off guard, catch me off guard. Um, so yeah, the fact that I, I split up that amount throughout the 12 months of the year, again, I'm, I'm accounting for that in my income. Um, so even if I have a shoot him until I know I can actually chase him down. And that is pretty helpful for this fight, I imagine. Where'd he go? Oh, here he is. Shoot. Of course, I waited and did exactly the opposite of what I was planning and preparing for. Terrible. Boy, rusty. What's this? Nope. Yeah, there's some heels and things up here. There's probably some more over here. this, yeah. Nope, not white, or not shield, at least. Oh, 
catch up on chat here in two seconds. free promos tell Kyle they should spawn yeah I figured the the uh, logo would be small enough no one would even see it and recognize it so whatever but yeah it's not a bad idea hashtag ad hashtag sponsor me Of uh, goodies. So yeah, I would uh, would strongly encourage everybody watching this to, as of right now, you know, start looking at your own finances like a business and start tracking more of those long-term recurring expenses. Uh, on a monthly basis to account for uh, that money over time. I do the same thing with a couple of other ones, like my car insurance, which I pay in six-month in increments. I also budget that out monthly. Uh, if you pay some of those larger expenses up front, sometimes they'll give you a discount. I think I get like a 10% discount because I, I pay for it in six months as opposed to monthly. Um, let's see... I have uh, a constant net worth calculator. Well, it's not automatic, so I have to do it manually, but I'm, I update it probably at least a couple times a year where I just go in and update all my debts and all of my assets, if you will, which it's really nothing crazy at the moment, but, you know, it, over time it accrues. Of course. So I've got, you know, like my car that I have listed as both an asset and a debt. Um, I've got, you know, like electronics and furniture, things that are worth some level of a significant amount. Um, and I'll, of course, track the those payments and update where the payments are at so I know when I'm you know, about to have a debt paid off, and then you can adjust your, you know, your, your monthly income and expenses based on when those things are paid off. Um, I have the car expenses split into like a, just on my revenue versus expenses section there's only like one little cell for car expenses but in that calculation i have like this monthly car wash subscription that i have um i've got the like general maintenance uh a you know a service every i think i have to do it every three months because i drive my vehicle for work um but yeah so i have that kind of broken out um in that, you know, that one cell just kind of broken out separately on the side. But, um, oh, and car payment, of course, too, so all that kind of is, uh, is split up. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. Hey, hey. Nice try. I've got to get away from that. Whee! Slidey, slidey! Meow. Yes, you understood. I wanted to get away from that guy, so I didn't do this. Oh, shoot. Is he down here? Screw it, I'm gonna heal. Would rather have saved. The 
those splashes, but can't use them if I'm dead. This is a tough one. I'm gonna go with this and go bow instead of AR. that noise uh, okay okay there's a falcon somewhere over here which likely means there's a player close what's good welcome JG bite welcome talking about personal finance today I'm trying to see if I can clutch this first dub of the day The uh, stream topic is, uh, well, so much for that. That was very close, though. If only I would get that headshot. Um, so yes, yeah, so the stream topic is uh, Your Name Here, LLC, um, and I strongly encourage everybody at all times to look at your personal finance like a business looks at a business personal finance instead of having such a huge separation between personal finance and uh, business finance finance because I think that if you really dig in and and inventory and do you know debt and uh, asset and all that stuff just you know map it out and keep track of it and Kind of take inventory of it. I think that it really helps how you see your own finances. I think it's encouraging sometimes to, you know, hopefully see your your assets or equity and stuff going up. But if you're not looking at that stuff and not tracking any of it, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. You know what I mean? I mean, shoot. Nowadays, I don't even really look at my retirement accounts more than a couple times a year, uh, but looking at those numbers and updating the, my Excel sheet accordingly is, um, is helpful. Um, I might bring my computer over here. Um, nah, it's okay. I'll probably, I can probably pop it up on my phone. Um, just to show an example of my, uh, budget document, but page one, I've got, you know, Income versus expenses. Um, page two, I believe, is the uh, assets, um, debt, and a couple of like goals, if you will. Um, you know, like having my car paid off by whatever, you know, the I guess it's probably three and a half years from now um, when the loan is up. Uh, my cell phone will be paid off in 
July. Two years from whenever I had to replace it because I lost it on a bachelor in, on an island in Ohio. <laughs> um, so two years from whatever that the date of that weekend was is when that'll be. Uh, <laughs> that'll it's, that'll be when that gets is paid off. But uh, and then like uh, you know have X amount. In, in savings by this year, five years from that, there's another, you know, increment of where I want to have my savings. Oh boy. Can I not jump through? Oh my god. Drive me nuts, game. That was counterproductive. There we go. Yeah. Oh, they've got these poo poo weapons. Alright. More poo poo weapons. Alright, let's go fight some people. Nice. Okay. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? This is good. Oh. Maybe ground floor? Hey! Get back here! Come back here! My boy, watch your legs off! Probably like uh, our topic for today. We're uh, talking about, well, I guess, so the topic is um, your name here in parentheses LLC and my recommendation is to look at your personal finance the same way that a business looks at the business's finance. Um, and what I mean by that is the inventory of debt and uh, assets and revenue and expenses, breaking out recurring long-term expenses such as a yearly car registration and, you know, oil changes and things like that, breaking those up into monthly charges. So if, you know, your oil change is 120 bucks every six months, uh, budget for $20 a month going towards oil changes. Um, goodness. Uh, I think really what a huge difference, um, difference maker in my budgeting and what I do that a lot of people do not do 
is I have so much stuff inventoried as expenses. Um, I mean, obviously, you, you know, some regular basic budgeting things would be like rent or your mortgage or your car payment or groceries or, um, you know, uh, budgeting a hundred or two hundred bucks a month for entertainment, like for, you know, going out and uh, enjoying life a little. Um, but I've taken it a step further where I budget for a haircut every month. I budget for um, some necessities like toilet paper and toiletries, you know, hair gel, um, stuff that isn't groceries in a food sense, but just some of that stuff, you know, something about once a month. You're going to have to, you know, maybe you get laundry detergent or you're, maybe this month it's... Where's this chest at? I don't need to go anyway. Screw it. Um... So yeah, maybe this month it's toilet paper. Next month it's uh, laundry detergent. Next month after that it's, uh, you know, air fresheners for your, your house or um, dish soap, whatever. Like there's just some of those not food type of necessities that, uh, that I try to account for like about a hundred bucks a month, I think. Um, I budget for concerts and also entertainment outside of that. Um, I budget for, at least with me living in Denver, I budget a little bit for um, not only gas, but parking, just some of those random travel related expenses, tolls, stuff like that, you know, if you're in an area that that you consistently have to use those types of things, budget for it. Um, and everybody's situation's different, but I think, again, the important part is just sitting down, setting aside some time, taking inventory of all that stuff that you know is a consistent expense so that uh, you can budget for it. Um, oh, shit. What is this dude hitting me with? Goodness. Okay. I'm actually just gonna pop both of these. <laughs> I use Wine app. I have not heard uh, of that app. What's uh, what's the scoop? Yeah, if you see my spreadsheet for expenses, you'd think I'm a weirdo. Same here, dude. Honestly, I have everything worked out. Oh shoot. What is happening? Why is this dude running around? So far away from his master. Stop it! Stupid sliding. Quit it! <laughs> I'm confused on what's happening. Go, 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 go. Not in there, silly. Off his eyes. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, I, I would also be looked at as a complete psychopath if people, which I've shown a lot of people, honestly. I've got a really um, dumbed down version of my Excel sheet um, that is available for free. If you want it, feel free to shoot me a. Just get in touch somehow. And ask me for it, and I can send you the uh, blanket or, or the, the blank uh, general uh, budgeting thing. I've probably sent it to close to a hundred people now since I originally created it in like shoot, I don't know, like 2010. Um, and I've fine-tuned mine a lot, and and fine-tuned the sample one a little bit, a little bit here and there too. But I kept it pretty uh, pretty basic on purpose 
Because I think a lot of people, if you've never done budgeting before, getting started budgeting, it seems like this, you know, such a boring, big deal type of thing. So people, like, you know, are hesitant to start it. And I think having a, a, a really basic, just fill in these, you know, 20 numbers, um, I think it helps people be less hesitant to, like, you know, open the document and be like, Oh, screw it, I'm not going to actually do this. This is too, too too involved for me. So, you want it? Let me know. Try to get bricked up real quick here. Um, I need to use my augments. What's up, dude? Crap, this is a mistake. Man, this guy gonna take my kill. I saw you there. Shot. He's 6 HP. That's so annoying. That was my mistake, though. I did not mean to jump down, and I also at one point was in midair and switched to build when I needed to have my shotgun out. <laughs> Should I fire myself for embezzlement? <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we all should, probably. <laughs> uh, I try to be as honest as I can with my personal finance, and I, I honestly still probably don't uh, truly take a 100% accurate story of it. I investigated myself and I've found no wrongdoing. At a boy, that's what you like to hear. <laughs> uh, at least with personal finance, you don't have to. You don't have anybody to answer to. Like I could be so much better about saving than I am. Um, I'm decent. Um, you know, maybe better than the general population. But I still definitely, you know, spend too much on concerts and festivals and booze and um, just nonsense. But hey, uh, my dad always says, uh, or taught me, life costs money. So I, as I've gotten uh, a little bit, you know, more um, into my adulthood and kind of had paid off a lot of that initial debt that, you know, people incur as a young adult. My, my finances are, are in order. Um, so while I could be better, um, I do whatever I want because it's my finances. Son, my money. Um, there you go, man. Funds that should be used for car payments are now being used for giant chocolate rabbits. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey. Like I said, it's your money. Use it how you want. Uh, as long as your bills is paid. Gucci. <laughs> yeah, man, just sell your car. Then you'll have more, more money to spend on uh, giant chocolate rabbits. Skinniest congressman, congressman I've ever seen. That man have a... Have a RS sword? What is it? Are you saying on? Clarify that one for me, big dog. I think there might be a typo or something there. Um, never regret it though. Live it up for show. Yep, that's what I'm saying. Is as long as your stuff's taken care of, at least for me, the reason I can be an idiot in some regards with my finances is because I am 
30 and single and don't have any kids and don't have any major medical expenses and don't have any, you know, uh, I don't, I don't own a house, so, you know, my, my finances are pretty relaxed because all of those things are the case, and it, that is the case so that I can do whatever I want. <laughs> That's part of the reason uh, none of those things are in order. It's freedom, baby. Freedom. Alright, we get a little bricked up here. That is helpful. Oh, these stupid doors are so annoying, dude. Knock a couple more of these down. Oh, hello! Didn't want to do that. Alright, I know this is not the most exciting. Watch a uh, person with bad gadgets. But uh, anyway, so like I was saying, um, oh, it's far. I gotta go. More cabbage. Yep. Nice. Bye, cabbages. I need this. Uh, okay. I can grab this. All right, so high speed recap to get me back on, on track. Think of your personal finance like a business thinks about business finance. Uh, you know, number one. Number two, take inventory of all of your uh, debt, assets, income, expenses. Track all that stuff in as much detail as you possibly can. Um, let's see. Long-term expenses that are occurring, like uh, car registration every year, budget for those monthly so that when they come up, you uh, expect them. Um, taxes, because it's relevant, um, I at least uh, take a standard deduction, which for those of you who are not super literate in tax terms. Standard deduction is the automatic deduction the government can let you take. Uh, usually deductions are for things like children, like dependents. Um, I'm trying to think of something like a, like a spouse. I think you can take deductions for some of that stuff. Um, and deductions meaning they take more money out of your check and give you typically a larger refund. Um, I take the standard deduction. A lot of my friends, you know, don't. And I, I agree that there are things that are not advantageous about doing the standard deduction. But for me, at least, the reason I do is because it makes me more motivated to do my taxes. And I don't like dread doing them every year. Shoo faster! Getting dominated tonight. Um, it makes me more motivated because I'm like, oh, I'm excited to get my taxes. I'm probably going to do them tonight, honestly. Um, I'm excited to get them done so I get that money back. So it's it's a, a trick that the government uses on us. There's no doubt about that. So I know that a lot of people are against taking the standard deduction. Um, and I, I understand that entirely. But for me, at least, um, at least important to know one way or the other. So take a standard deduction and your paychecks will be lower get a bigger tax return, uh, and then the reverse for if you don't. Grab a, grabbing a water from the kitchen really quick. I'll probably ta maybe do another session about taxes. Not that I... I'm an expert, but maybe it'd be a good chance for me to do some research and learn some things.
Come on. Somebody do the jump around with me. I need more self-discipline. I make a budget and ruin it within days. <laughs> You're not alone. At least you made one. So many people don't even... Even adults. When I first posted something probably six years ago on social media, basically just like, hey, I've got a basic Excel document. Oh, yeah, that, that's another reminder when I was kind of doing my recap. Uh, for those of you who may have joined midstream, I've got a, a very basic Excel budget document that I'd be happy to send to anybody for free. If, just if you want it, just contact me somehow and, and say, hey, can you send me that document and give me your email address and I can email it to you. Um, but uh, that's, uh, you know, fair game for anybody who wants to get started in, uh, in with budgeting. But so many people, where I was going with that is so many people that asked for that document right away were people a lot older. <laughs> so, you know, I'm 20, 22, sending a document to like, you know, 40 plus year old folks. And, and there's no shame there, of course. I don't mean it in a, in a negative way. I was just a little surprised. Um, and I'm sure that it's still the case for a large portion of America where, yeah, they might have an idea for what their roughly income and expenses um, are, but I bet you most of them don't have a rough net monthly gain uh, idea, you know. They just kind of watch their bank account go up and down and, and don't really have any sort of uh, idea what the um, what the, the net gain is every month. And I think that that's super important for a long-term goal budgeting, goal accomplishing and whatnot. If you don't know how much it's going up every month, you have no idea how long it's going to take you until you hit whatever goal you have set in place. So, figure out what your net gain is, set some goals, and uh, that's the easiest way to get started. You know, I, I very quickly um, wanted to uh, Very quickly wanted to have a lot of my initial young adult debt paid off. Um, so I was setting goals for that. Um, you know, just tracking that. Like, I know exactly what month my car is going to be paid off. I know exactly what what month my cell phones uh, are going to be paid off. I always do the, the two-year no-interest payment plans through Verizon. Um, you know, I know... A lot of people are really hesitant to, to buy phones uh, on a payment plan. Totally understand that. Obviously, do whatever's best for you. But for me, I'm like, if there's no penalty um, and no, you know, no interest, and truly no penalty, no fees, I'll do payment plan. That, that's that's fine um, for some stuff, uh, like my phone. And at one point, I purchased some electronics on. A no interest monthly payment plan. My phones. Oh, that, those are pretty much the only things that I'll do them on. But as long as it doesn't hurt you at all, it don't hurt you. Okay. Getting rid of this stupid gun. It keeps failing me every time I pick it up. Maybe it's just my fault, but. So yeah, check your check your numbers, check your financial pulse, if you will, um, and then you can slowly add, you know, other features of your budget. Um, I on the income on the income side of things, I think something that uh, a lot of people don't track. That uh, again, I I think that it's helpful to track, and this one's. This one it helps in your favor usually for you that that number, um, that monthly net gain number, is uh, you know track stuff like rewards points. Um, I, I don't necessarily track like how many points I have on Starbucks, but it's like how much roughly every month. Maybe it's five dollars, but how much you know roughly every month do you save yourself if you utilize? Um, rewards points like Kroger, 
you know, maybe every other month you use the Kroger discount for gas and you get five bucks or ten bucks uh, off your gas, you know, there well, ten every other month is five bucks a month, so some of those little things you can take inventory of. Um, I track uh, my credit card points. I use a no, no interest uh, as long as you pay it off at the end of every month, which I have it set on, on auto pay. But do a credit card uh, as long as you have the means to pay it off at the end of every month. It gives you cashback rewards points. I personally... Uh, hashtag ad, uh, use a, a chase card. It's like one and a half percent on everything. You know, they'll throw some other little bonuses on four, four percent this month on groceries, five percent this month on going out to chain restaurants, blah, blah, blah. I, I make probably 40 to 60 bucks every single month on my cashback rewards points, and I track that as income. Um, let's see. I, if you're doing like restaurant rewards points, um, sometimes you can, you know, maybe get a free meal a couple times a year. Um, just depends on how well you play those, those rewards games. And it's certainly easy to fall into the trap of, oh, I'm getting rewards on this. I'm just going to spend more money here. Well, <laughs> it, uh, doesn't, that can, that can easily net you a, uh, or result in a net loss if you end up spending more money just so you can earn more rewards. But, um, anyways. I at least, again, take a little bit of inventory on some of those money back type things that I can get. And big time recommendation. I, I, I have even heard a lot of you know, personal finance guru people type, um, or guru type people say that the cashback rewards card, uh, is a good financial move as long as there's no yearly fee and as long as you can pay it off every month. Then, uh, you know, it, it, it can only help you in that sense. Unless you get a little trapped by the I can spend more money now because I have a credit, you know, a line of credit. Just gotta be smart about it. As long as you play the game right, then you can make out in the positive as opposed to the negative. Um, RuneScape, absolutely. I, I swear to you. RuneScape and Roller Coaster Tycoon have made me the, the finance nerd that I am these days. Right, I should probably get out of the storm. But these, there are the other. Okay. I need to use my augments. I've not done a good job today of remembering to do that. Holy cow! It's max distance. Let's go. Basically, max distance. You need a bu- oh. Why, Nab? You need a budget. Nice, okay. Nab that helps you budget, for sure. Oh, that's great. I think that, uh... My chair is squeaky this evening. Weirdest thing. Chicken! Get off me! Um, yeah, any anything that helps you track that stuff. I'm an Excel nerd, personally, um, but I've, I've heard there are a lot of really good apps out there, so find one that works for you. Anything's better than nothing, though. A lot of those actually track and categorize your expenses um, for you, so that's definitely pretty dope. Oh, I shouldn't have wasted that splash. There are jellyfish in front of me. That's
Um, come on, give me splashes. Dang it. I need to go, and I need to use my augments. I'm going to try to pick up this DQ smash. Don't eat invent. <laughs> don't eat inventory. <laughs> Correct. You can take inventory, but don't eat inventory. You need to eat food. <laughs> you pay taxes. You get forty-two in Fortnite. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want somebody to uh, hook me up with a tax return, but in V bucks. Just give it to me in V bucks. It's gonna go there anyways. <laughs> okay. Use this. Nice. That helps. Rockwave okay. bow. Uh, that's honestly happening for sure. That's going to be helpful right now. Oh boy. I thought it was going to be helpful. <laughs> now I'm stuck in a tree. Is this real life? Is this really happening right now? It's not real life, it's just... I'm stuck in a tree. Jeez! Give me a break. results in a speed boost after you factor in the time that it takes for you to jump up in a mantle, but it feels like it, it is helpful. It's probably a slight net speed boost. Come on! What else, folks? Nice. That's, that's, what the heck is it? Oh, that's one of the things dropping. Man, they dropping everywhere of me here. Jeez. A little bit more brick. Chair in Spanish. Oh, hello. Oh, shoot. Miss me, miss me. Now you got it. Never mind. guys have heals probably. Uh oh. Why does it keep giving me this sprint glitch where it's like running half speed? I like this. This is nice. Get in here so I can 
Nice. See you, brother. Oh, hello. Jump. Oh my goodness. There we go. Be the one. This could be the one. Yes, I can. This. Should be looking for a better than green pistol. He didn't just die. Give me this crown. Ooh, old pistol. Nice. All right, two other players. This is a little anticlimactic, but I am. Got those five digit monthly gains going this year. Love that. Absolutely. Damn, the work shirt on, still grinding? Yes, sir. It's all business Monday, baby. It's all business. Oh, I'm scared. 1v1. I see him. Okay. He's going to have to come my way. I'm just going to surprise Deku smash him once he gets closer. What am I doing? Did he just duck that? I'm so bad, dude. I'm choking this so hard. Let's go! Salvage it, baby. How do you say chair in Spanish, son? Should have hit him with the, the dunk emote. That's my favorite. I am so glad that I salvaged that because that was embarrassing. I got an idea. Let's pull up the emote menu in the middle of a fight. That's crazy. Where's the jacket? I ain't wearing a jacket today. I said earlier, Fortnite is sweaty enough uh, without wearing uh, three layers. <laughs> so two two will have to do for today. Oh, that felt good. All right, cool. There's my first officially recorded uh, dub on stream. I did get two of them on Saturday. Really, really late night. I was drunk streaming. <laughs> it was fun, but uh, I got two solo dubs and Twitch bugged out and didn't save the that section of the replay. It was like an hour and a half in, and it, only, and it cut off after like 36 minutes. And I was like, really? I think it was like either one or two games after it cut off that I got that first victory too. And I was like, man, you playing with my heart right here, Twitch. 
All right, cool. I'm gonna hit the lobby really fast. Man is selling AC on Twitch. <laughs> it's all right. Nah, I, I ain't here for my professional career. I'm here for my personal career <laughs> on Twitch. Uh, my work work stops at five, baby. And then it's on, on to shit I'm trying to do. <laughs> oh, man. So, let's see. I'm trying to remember where I left off budget-wise. Again, reminder for tonight's topic, your name here, LLC. So Aaron Newmeyer LLC for myself. Uh, from now on, strongly encourage you to think of your personal finance like the, oh, the way a business thinks about the business's finance. Um, a little bit more on um, some things that I take inventory of spending wise. Uh, I split out supplements. Um, so, uh, I take a brain supplement called Qualia, um, or did, did for a long time and still do. I took, I took it today. Um, it's like a brain, uh, stimulant. It's over the, it's over the counter though. It's not a prescription. Um, but I think some of that stuff is good. You know, protein powder, that of course would be a supplement. If you're somebody who, like me, since COVID, uh, drinks too often and thus takes ibuprofen a lot, <laughs> um, I, you know, you can budget for ibuprofen. Any sort of supplement, though, I break that out. Um, I think supplements, even if it's just like a multivitamin, is a good idea. Um, but break that out and take that number, um, you know into account in your revenue versus expenses lineup. Um, let's see. Oh, so another tip that I do um, is uh, planning out trip budget ahead of time. So like if I'm going to go, most of the time it's for festivals nowadays. Um, I'll, I'll, I've got a separate, you know, vacations tab on my Excel budget document and uh, every time I've got a trip coming up I budget out okay you know 400 for the flight you know three 350 for the hotel um, food drinks uh, ubers if you're gonna be doing stuff that might require ubering um, just all of those potential expenses that happen on every vacation I don't really budget out food that heavily on vacations because um, I, I mean you got to eat no matter what if you're on vacation or not so you know don't I wouldn't hurt yourself too bad on those because then you're just like man uh, you know this vacation is going to be so expensive blah 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 well yeah it probably is going to be vacation expensive but like don't ruin your vacation because you inventoried your Food too high. Oh no. Right, you, know what? you know what, dude? Done playing these games. Guy above me? I think he is. Nope, no, 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 no. Close. Go down. Okay, to organize this. Oh boy. I pulled up my menu. I should have killed him, although. Tough situation because I didn't have time to heal. We were talking about embezzle embezzlement and how that affects Emperor Penguins. <laughs> Since Emperor Penguins rule the earth and have that of Yeah, dude. <laughs> Emperor Penguins. I watch a lot of nature documentaries, so I know a decent amount about Emperor Penguins. 
hey, the economy affects the, affects the environment. So, you know, there's a, a lesson in there somewhere. I don't know what it is, but. Oh, boy. That's disappointing. Um, but yeah, so I, I plan out my, my trips spending, but don't overestimate your trips because then maybe you'll be less likely to go on trips. I spend a pretty good amount on food in general because I don't really cook because I've cooked a ton. When I was in my younger, my early 20s and budgeted really heavily because of that. And once, you know, once my finances were in order where I could stop carrying up or caring about how much I spend on eat, going out to eat, I just go out to eat all the time and do takeout. <laughs> Bachelor life, baby. But yeah, you gotta eat. You gotta eat. So that's another thing that, again, you know, uh, it's not necessarily when people talk about budgeting. You know, a lot of people are hesitant to to get started because they think that they're gonna have to become a a you know a Nazi about their own finances and be like really, really, really disciplined and doesn't necessarily have, mean that you have to be more or less disciplined, but personal finance and budgeting is just about taking inventory and admitting to yourself where you're at where you're at and making sure that at least your bank account's going up up more than one more than one petty every uh, every month because otherwise if you're you know at, at the point where you're at a net loss that can only sustain itself for so long. But work your budget out to the point where you're at least breaking even or making, you know, a little bit of money. And then what I do is I take my net gain of, um, you know, my net monthly gain. I think I've got mine worked out to where, to where I net gain about like 146 bucks or something a month. Um, and I factor, you know, I, I have a 12 month projection where if like, you know, if today's January 1st, 2023, January 1st, 2024, if my budget rings true throughout the year, here's where, where I'll be. Um, and my, my net gain is only $146 because I work in sales and a lot of my pay is commission related and I budget based on my uh, like I, I lowball my estimated commission every month in case I have a bad month. Um, I think last month or last year, you know, uh, I was below my, even below my rough estimated number, a couple hundred bucks. Um, and and it didn't matter because it was, you know, right after a couple of strong months or something like that. But I, I try to lowball it um, to the point where... Why did I even land here? I have no idea why I landed here. <laughs> Not paying enough attention. Hey, get back here. Yeah, uh, I, I lowball it so it's not a calamity if it happens. Um, you know, as long as it, I can catch back up you know, in the next couple months. Um, you know, I take a take a very very um, what's the word I'm looking for? The opposite of generous, uh, reserved or whatever estimate of what I make commission monthly, and uh, that's the number I use for my, you know, monthly net net gain. So there are were often months last year where I would make a couple thousand dollars more on a commission check than I had budgeted for, and then it's like, cool, that's just extra money. But you always want to make sure that you don't overestimate and put yourself in a, a position where you're relying on know a couple hundred bucks to show up and it and it doesn't so if you're in a performance or uh, you know maybe it's hourly where it doesn't change um, or, or where it does change 
frequently based on how much you work or all that stuff. Just just lowball your estimates on your your monthly net gain uh, calculation. But uh, yeah, once you get some of that stuff out in front of you, you can do some pretty cool stuff with those numbers. You know, again, kind of like that 12-month projection thing, or uh, you can calculate your net worth, which I think is a, a silly thing to do for your everyday citizen, um, especially younger folks. But even when I was 22, 23, and my net worth was like $1,200, uh, or, or ne negative, probably, there for a while, when you factor in student loans and a, uh, a car note and all that stuff. Um, but I think it's fun to just calculate it. You know, I've probably got a mid, I would say mid, yeah, I guess maybe a mid five figure net worth at this point, just between retirement accounts and between my car value and my furniture, like I was saying earlier, just a lot of those things that you accrue over the years that, that have value. And I, I think that at least for some of those everyday items even if they're not that expensive that it's encouraging to see because you're like man if i get in a bind at least i know that i have you know even if it's eighteen hundred dollars worth of like clothes and electronics and just items that i could sell um it's good to be aware that you know you have that and it's a little bit good for the peace of mind to just be like looking at more of your net worth than your bank account because there are a lot of other um, factors in your, in your net worth that you could, again, you could use if you uh, ever really got in a, in a bind. I need a shotgun. Can somebody give me a shotgun? Hey, it's a shitty one, but a shotgun nonetheless. I guess I should have been more specific in what I was asking the universe. <laughs> asking the universe for whatever. I hear people use that phrase a lot. Weird people in Colorado. <laughs> because I don't even like the scar. So, poo-poo this chapter. Oh no, I didn't want to activate that. Let's see if I can hit this. Hold still! Oh boy! I did not know that uh, there was no. Nice. That's exactly what I needed, baby. I have. I'll look another one. shotgun and I had a wet paper towel shotgun so that was a tough fight all right I'm gonna pop over to Rocket League here in a sec 
I'm only going to go just about exactly two hours tonight. Oh, just because I worked all day today and have to work all day even tomorrow. Also need to knock out some video editing for a couple of last week's streams. I think maybe just Fridays. Um, but all right, I'm going to pop over. I'll be back in 60 seconds. I'm going to hit the restroom and switch controllers and get Rocket League fired up. So BRB fun. I learned the hard way last week, I think on the Wednesday stream, that uh, that intro song is copyrighted is if you let it play for too long. So I think like five minutes of my stream got muted on Wednesday, which doesn't matter. It wasn't like a copyright strike or anything, but good to know. Good to know. Good, good to know. You got only AC. I haven't been on that app. <laughs> only fans. Big money's right there, baby. Yeah. You know, we got it. <laughs> Don't forget them decimals. <laughs> yeah, five, five, five figures of net worth if you include de the decimals. That's, uh, that's not what I was... Uh, that's not the case, but <laughs> maybe there's some people that do that. All right, so a little bit more... Ooh, that was nice. Um... If you like personal finance stuff, uh, definitely stay tuned for some of the later Monday all business streams. Uh, all of my Monday streams will be either personal develop like in a career sense or personal development in a career sense related or personal finance related. I'll have some, uh, oof, some fairly in-depth topics to cover especially on, um, you know, young adult personal finance, because that's what I've, that's all that I've experienced being like a single, you know, a single young lad. Uh, and having that, you know, perspective of personal finance, it gets a lot more complex once you get further in your later years. And I'm prepared for a lot of that stuff, but uh, haven't had to ex quite experience it and for you know younger audience this being video game related nice uh video game related figure uh most of this is just going to kind of be young adult personal finance but anyways i'll have some some tips and tricks and things that i did in my uh 20s to set me up for where i'm at now which is you know i'm not a baller um but i most certainly have 
all of my needs taken care of. I live, you know, live by myself. I drive a pretty decent car. Um, and I, you know, I party my ass off. <laughs> like I was saying earlier with just spending a lot of money on concerts. The only reason I have the ability to, to budget for, you know, $500 a month of food uh, and grocery type expenses and also $200 a month of concerts and also $100 of entertainment expenses. The only reason I have the ability to to budget for that is uh, because I was very disciplined in my early 20s um, and, and now reaping the benefits of, of that uh, foundation that I laid, if you will. Oh, that was close. Um, I'm just going to do a couple minutes of warm-up here. Um... I do have, I did have a special request from a homie today, um, on, I'll get to that in a minute, um, but let's see here, with Rocket League games being a little bit more consistent and not taking as long to queue and things like that, it's harder to, to talk, um, about some of the topic stuff when I'm in game, so I'll try to finish it up bulk of what I wanted to kind of discuss uh, here in the training. But, um, but yeah, if you like these types of, to of topics, all of Monday will be, uh, Mondays will be um, either a career personal development related or personal finance related. Um, so lots more to come. Oh, that was nice. Oop, that was not nice. Lots more to come uh, down the road. But, um, yeah, hopefully some of this was helpful. One last reminder. I guess I might do one last last reminder at the very end, but if you want that Excel budget document, the blank, very dumbed down one that I have um, to get started with budgeting for yourself, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to send it to you if you just give me your email address. Um, so yeah, holla at your boy if you want it. Uh, that's pretty much the bulk of our discussion. Um, the only other thing that I would say is on your expenses, um, I think it's important to budget for saving. Um, so, you know, in your expenses category, at least for me, um, I don't do a deposit into a savings account. I just have like a, a retirement fund that I have through an, an investment broker that I put like 50 bucks a month in outside of my work 401k. Um, I think a big reason that is a good idea uh, is because if you have a work 401k, that's great and all, but there's a good chance that your career will not be the same for your entire life. Um, and it is very helpful, as I've already experienced in my life, to have a personal, you know your own private investment account even if it even if it's again only 50 bucks a month or 25 bucks a month that you're depositing into that um having that account open lets you when you leave a job roll your funds into your own um you know account so anytime i change jobs i just roll you know whichever account has accumulated you can contact that the firm that managed that investment and just be like, hey, uh, I want to roll my funds into my own private account. Uh, here's, you know, you just give them the account number and stuff and they, I don't think they legally can argue with you about that. So it's helpful to have that account to roll things into. Uh, and also just if you, you know, happen to come into a bunch of money somehow, whether it's through an inheritance or a, you know, some sort of a legal settlement or whatever, having that account to be able to put some of that stuff into right away, it's, it's good to ha just have that account open and have that, you know, avenue available for you. Um, you're a baller, else you wouldn't be playing Rocket League. Yeah, dude, baller for sure. Been balling on Rocket League big time lately. <laughs> um, let's see, Twitch Primes, yeah. Someday, I think very soon I'm, I will hit the, fil the affiliate level um, where that is uh, a thing, but uh, I don't plan on 
Don't plan on pestering people for subs or donos or any of that nonsense. Um, I'm just here for the content and for the community building aspect of, uh, of streaming, so don't worry. Don't worry, worry I ain't gonna be plugging. That shit pisses me off. I can't stand watching streamers that just plug the whole time. It's like, <laughs> we know how to donate. <laughs> you don't have to remind us every eight seconds. Link in the description below. <laughs> so annoying. Anyways. Um, but yeah, anyway, so donations or d deposits rather into those types of accounts. Uh, your eight, an HSA, if you have one of those, count those as expenses. Um, and, you know, make sure you're subtracting that from your paychecks and whatnot and your monthly uh, income. And that pretty much about does it. If anything else comes to mind, I can... Uh, you know, talk midstream. But now, wanted to get to the special request from uh, my boy Jimmy Schneider, who texted me today and said, "Hey, you know, it was just basically just like, hey, uh, do you have some tips on?" Or he asked what what training programs I use in Rocket League, uh, and said something about how I've got pretty solid aerial control. Thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it, dog. <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, it's, it's mediocre, but uh, I'll take mediocre at least. Um, but yeah, so to instead of uh, answering him, which I sort of answered him via text, I was just like, you know what, I can probably just cover that um, here on uh, on the stream today. So I do have a, a pretty detailed breakdown of this in, I believe, my first Wednesday stream. Uh, Wednesdays are the midweek chillin' sessions where I do a lot of training and just kind of get in and knock the ball around on Rocket League to kind of keep it to keep it easy. Makes it easier on me because I'm telling you what, it's as sweaty as competitive gaming is nowadays, it's nice to be able to just hop on and and play without sweat. <laughs> so all those Wednesdays will be more training related, more uh, you know general life advice stuff. But I I did cover. Uh, I'm pretty sure, again, it was that first Wednesday, which the, the replay is available on YouTube for anybody who, you know, if, if you're a Rocket League player watching this video down the road, uh, and you, you're... based around certain moves. You can practice a an aerial like this um, in, in training where like the ball is set up for you. A lot of them will like start you on the wall with the ball in front of you and you just hit it and then you go into the play and then you can restart it. So it's good to rapid fire those. I'm sure it is helpful in a training sense, but in a game, the ball's not gonna be set up for you like that. Um, so I wanted to practice the setup, the execution, all of it. So this right here is how I got good at aerials, is just dribbling the ball up on the wall and giving myself a good aerial touch, trying to get a couple of extra touches and then also gaining control like this again on the other end. So, so right there, you know, I screwed it, screwed that up, of course, but that's all right. But I, I trap the ball, knock it over towards the wall, hit it, try to get a couple of extra touches. If I don't make it all the way to the goal, I try to trap it. Um, I missed it there, but trap it under myself from the air, and immediately start dribbling on the ground again. So, doing that just repeatedly. Right here, just gonna set it up, hit it, a couple of extra touches. I don't even, not even gonna score this. I'm trying to stay behind it, and then boom, I'm right back into the dribble. Uh. Same thing with the ground dribbling, is the only way that I got good at ground dribbling is just doing this, you know, do a little zigzag, pick it up on the wall, bring it back down, ground dribble, maybe pop it up here. Or mess it up. 
but this is exactly what I did. 20 minutes a day, almost every day for probably three months. I still do it pretty frequently, as you can see. Um, but I was, I was doing like a minimum of 10 minutes a day almost every single day for like three months. And sometimes I would do a lot more than 10 minutes, but it was just like the daily repetition of get in here and knock it around to get used to how your, call, how your car reacts to the ball, how to get those light touches in, how to get you know a second touch, and how to position yourself for your next touch. Mm, missed it. But recently, if you guys have been, you know, some of you guys have seen it if you're watching, I've been trying to work on these midfield aerial plays where it's not coming off the wall. It's like, you know, bouncing through the midfield. I've been trying to get better at some of those trick type of plays because I'm not very good at it right now. I'm a much more aerial heavy player as opposed to a ground uh, dribbling and control type of player. So I've been trying to work on getting better at that. I think that's gonna go in. Yeah, it would have been very, wouldn't have been a very spicy shot, but, but yeah, so Jimbo, to answer your question, that's how I got better is these, these wall setups and getting used to this touch right there. That's the hardest one to get down, how to get the, t you know, not only the touch, but how to, to get your car off the wall and right under the ball in order to get those air dribble plays. So you're not just banging it off the wall and losing possession to the other team. You gotta set up your next touch, every single touch. Um, and if you're hitting the ball, the ball too hard, or if you are out of position, you know, with your car um, after you you get one or two touches in, then you're gonna you're gonna lose possession. And in and in Diamond Two lobbies, losing possession means you're probably not going to score because those midfield shots don't really go in all that often. You've got to have some fancy stuff and have some control plays and whatnot. So um, I'm just going to queue in a comp competitive here because the competitive lobbies have been a little bit easier than the casual lobbies uh, the last week or so that I've been streaming. So I'm just going to get right in here and do, do some competitive. Um, another aerial control tip there, Jimbo, if you're, if you uh, are watching or eventually watch this is, uh, I, I did a lot of just driving around, drive the car around and jump off the wall and fly through the air. Just kind of get used to, again, controlling the car separate and apart from the ball, even just, you know, control the car, uh, and then maybe learn how, how to, uh, control the car and hitting the ball, you know what I mean? So I'll, I kind of would get, you know, pretend like I had the ball in front of me, get maybe halfway up the wall, do that initial jump, touch, um, and just visualize myself. Oh boy, terrible. Vi visualize myself air dribbling just to get used to, again, just kind of flying the car through the air. That's it. Oh, shoot. Oh, my goodness. I was going for a fancy power shot there. And we all saw how that went. Should be able... Oh, no, I thought that was going to hit the corner. Nice. Dang it, should have been up earlier for that. But yeah, it's all repetition, just like any other skill. So if you're trying to get better at aerials, you just gotta practice it a lot. Um, again, I, I don't use the training class training things. Uh, a lot of people do. Uh, it's probably something I should look into, but I just always have gone into free play, knock the ball around, get used to the setup and the execution of those aerial sh shots. And, and aerial passes and stuff too. Cause you can, you know, first step is just getting used to hitting the ball in the air 
And as long as you can hit it forward, you can at least, you know, make something productive happen typically from it. Whether it's a pass or, you know, you might line up yourself for a, another shot. But, uh, yeah, just start with getting used to making aerial contact in a productive manner. Um, nice. Shoot. It's close to being good. Oh, go in? Nice. That was <laughs> honestly a weak shot. <laughs> no idea how that went in. <laughs> What's OYT? Dang it. Probably could have been a little bit better placed on frame, but not too bad. Woo! That was scary. <laughs> I actually did that sort of on purpose. <laughs> At least where I was for that, that ground touch. Oh boy, that's dangerous. Dangerous. Go in. Mm. Close. Ah, shoot, that was so far behind that. Ah. Uh. It's okay. All the reps. I used to practice not being weird. Didn't work out so well. <laughs> you probably stopped practicing it, didn't you? I can tell. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like anything skill related though. Uh, all about just getting time in and, you know, a lot of, especially with gaming, a lot of being good is just how much you've played. Everybody had, kind of has their peak and where they sort of tap out, unless you really are doing some intense, you know. Come on. Go in. Uh, I knew it was gonna be high. Um, unless you have some, uh, intentional training sessions that you're, why was my teammate not going for that? If you're intentionally practiced, you really don't ever have a peak, but just kind of getting used to playing the game, you know, it's all about, and getting decent is all about just time. You gotta just put the time in. Especially with gaming, but you know, because it's, uh, it's digital, there's no genetics involved. That was a good touch. Please, how did you botch that that hard, dude? That was not a tough ball. <laughs> like, whatsoever. Give me that. That boost. Come on, play it to me. Nice. Oh man. I'm gonna say that corner bounce screwed me up. Thought it was gonna come right to me and then hit the inside of the post. What's OYT, Tipsy? Oh boy. That was pretty much over anyways. Look at that setup. Nice. See, when you do trainings, 
you don't get used to just that natural adjusting for what the ball's doing in that moment. Every aerial setup is going to be a little bit different. You're never going to get the same ball twice. So I think doing the free play setups and setting up your own aerial shots is a, a better uh, training practice. You're good. Uh, OIT is just something we used to say at basketball games. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Please, somebody be there. I guess I'm just gonna have to go get it myself. Just making that teammate. Good awareness. Not. Ah. Oh my goodness. That's embarrassing. I was trying to go for a very light, again, power play out there. Shouldn't have tried to be fancy on the goal line, Aaron. Oops, nope, I gotta bail out of that. Yeah. <laughs> well done. I think he's actually trying for that. Come on, get there. Close. Oh man, I miss, miss right that. Shit. All right, did we triple commit this? Yeah, we triple commit that. All right, at least it's not all my fault. <laughs> I'll still say my bad though, regardless, because I have not played a great game thus far. <laughs> ah. Oh crap. Oh boy. That's not good. Whew, that was scary. Try not to have any more defensive blunders, so. Shoot. Well, at least I maybe freaked him out. Oh, that was awesome. Could have been awesomer if uh, my teammate actually would have hit that. Nice. Hell of a touch there. A little touch. Pitchy touch. Oh, 
jefe. Vamos a yo. Let's go, baby. <laughs> that was pretty nice. I need to keep letting those play because those replays are important for clips, but I don't think that was that spicy of a goal. Not really like clip worthy. It's a pretty easy backward read. Okay. Oh man. I'm misjudged off of. We are not playing good defense at all. I should not have went there. Right on. Might go another extra uh, 10 minutes or so of, of time today. Just because I want to get a handful of Rocket League games in. I know I spent a lot of time just in the training and monologuing and stuff, so. Got to give the people what they want. <laughs> yeah, let's go! Faked them so hard, both of them. I was like, oh, nope, I'm not going to go. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. The double fake. Oh, shoot. Please don't do this to us. Close one. I was horny for that. Ah. Wow. That's frustrating. I think I tipped this. I whiffed it. That's my fault. It was a little slow on the altitude gain there. It is getting hot in here. I don't know what it is. Must just me be me sweating in these Rocket League li lobbies. To the point where queuing in diamond lobbies, people are very uh, critical. <laughs> so I, I get a little nervous at times, just not wanting to screw up. But I think... Uh, I think it's important to overpower that with confidence. So come on, me, I got this. No, no uh, reason to be nervous. I don't have a reason to be nervous. It's not like I'm nervous. It's just just being sweaty, <laughs> literally, physically, figuratively. Oh, lovely. Well, appreciate everybody popping on as always. I'll have some of this stuff split up. I was going to do some of the the monologue splitting in YouTube over the weekend, but the weekend simply got away from me. So I'm going to hopefully catch up on some of that either this week or this coming weekend. That is still on the to-do list, and I'll continue to have some you know, hopefully a steady flow of, uh, of clips posted in case, you know, you can't, can't make the, lo the, uh, live streams and don't want to watch the re full replays. I'll keep trying to split that, some of the highlights up the best I can. Good touch. Hmm.
Good cut. Love it. Nice. Somebody? No. <laughs> Both of my team's teammates are in goal. And I put one right across the goal line, of course. It's... Uh, oh, shouldn't have gone up for that. Uh oh. Get out of here. Nope. It's a miss. What? Are we just not playing any offense this game, guys? Or. Still at it, we still at it. That's from South Park, isn't it? Oh boy, I was so far behind that play. Nice. Once again, teammates nowhere to be found on offense. defense my teammates have been playing and still they get a pretty easy goal. Nice, that should have yep, should end up oh, once again. They just don't want to Play the aerial game, apparently. Don't have any boost, please get there. Thought he was going to continue up the field with me, but clearly not. Yikes. We're down one goal. Why do people forfeit? pushing it all. Get 
there. Nice. Okay, tied up. Tied up, bricked up. Oh, hello. Scary. Oh no, don't do this. Even that, that's embarrassing. I screwed up again. Although, all three of us were back, so I... Not all my fault. It's annoying. I'm just gonna re -queue. Forget that happened. So glad I got a dub earlier on Fortnite. Finally. Just gonna have to edit out the part of, with me opening my emoji inventory. <laughs> or emoticon inventory in the middle of that fight. <laughs> Funny. a little scary. <laughs> How did that spit out that direction? <laughs> nice. Playboys. There's nowhere to be found on that one, but that's okay.
I could have stolen that, and I probably should have, but I was pretty certain that I saw all three of them up there, and I was like, well, if I've already botched a couple of plays in this game, <laughs> I don't want to piss the guys off. teammate knocked it in. Dang it! How has this kid demoed me so many times? That one was in midair. forward on that. I have not done a good job of getting aerial or uh, altitude tonight. Tell I'm just probably a little tired from working all day. Good shot. Let's go, baby. Looks like we should get a dub here at least to close the night out. See if I got any challenges completed. No, I did not. What even is there right now? Oh, they're all completed. That's why. <laughs> I see. Garage. No, I want to go to this. Good stuff. All right. Well, I think that double fake play is probably a. Uh, Clippable. Definitely got some Fortnite stuff, so. Solid evening. Um, yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hit the restroom, talk a little bit, and then we'll close her out.
I'll change my mind. I can just, I can wait on the restroom. Um, cool. Well, appreciate everybody popping on to watch me be mediocre at video games and talk about uh, personal finance in tonight's episode, your name here, LLC. So hope some of the finance stuff is helpful. I think personal finance is extremely important. I think that for me in my early 20s, I was stressed when I was, you know, had less than two grand in the bank account. <laughs> it just would stress me out. <laughs> so I was very, very, uh, you know, thankfully was very um, early in the personal finance and kind of getting my money right game. And as I said a little bit ago, that is most certainly put me in the position where I am today where I, I don't have to think about money all that often. So it's, uh, I would strongly encourage everybody to try to get to that point ASAP. You know, a couple of the general rules of thumb is that it's a good idea to have six months of your income uh, or three months of your income, I think, to obviously to start uh, three months of your income in the bank uh, so that if anything ever crazy ever happens, job related, you know, it's not as stressful. Um, just because you know you're still going to, your bills, you know, your heat's going to be on, your light, the lights are still going to be on, uh, you're still going to have a roof over your head. So that's a, certainly a, a good rule of thumb. Um, you know, I think I saw a stat, I have this stat actually written in my streaming document. Let me pull this up really fast. A couple of crazy statistics. Uh, 35% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings. <laughs> 35% of Americans, less than 1000 bucks in savings. That is terrifying. So if you fall into that category, I would strongly uh, encourage you to flip the flip that stat. Be on the 65% that, that does have... Um, at least a thousand in savings, and honestly, I think, I think nowadays two thousand, with which it, with as volatile as the economy has been lately, and how prices are going up on everything, I, I'd say you should probably set your sights on two thousand as a, as an emergency fund at least. Fund at least. I'll go through a lot more personal finance stuff down the road. Um, we'll talk about some topics like debt stacking and. Um, some other general finance tips, uh, I guess some light retirement planning. Cause again, I want this to, to be more young adult related. Um, but retirement planning to some degree, at least starting in your retirement planning. Um, but yeah, we'll be back in action on Wednesday, same time, same place. Uh, I might get in a little extra time Wednesday. Uh, if I'm feeling it, I think I played what four, three, three and a half hours or something last Wednesday, and four hours on, or maybe four hours on Wednesday and three and a half on Friday. But uh, yeah, right on, Mr. Tipsy Taco. Appreciate you popping in, JG Bide. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Be shingle as always. Um, yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. See y'all on Wednesday. Have yourself a good evening. And take care of your money.